Tonight we're going to look at something I think is very tremendous. Life is really great. The book of Ecclesiastes says, it then enjoy it. How many of you enjoy your life? Amen. That's great. Ecclesiastes of chapter 11, beginning with verse 7. Truly, the light is sweet. And a pleasant thing is for the eyes to behold the sun. Well, that is tremendous. How many of you get out and look at the sunset, sunrise? Just great. But if a man live many years and rejoice in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness, for they shall be many, all that cometh in vanity. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth. And let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Therefore remove sorrow from thine heart, and put away evil from the flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity. <clears throat> Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them, while the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. In the days when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease because they are few, and those that look out of the windows be darkened, and the door shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low, and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Also, when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail, because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets. Or ever the silver cord be loose, or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, or the wheel be broken at the cistern, then shall the dust return to earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. <laughs> vanity of vanity, says the preacher, all is vanity. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you and praise you for this day, for the beauty of it, for the blessings that you poured out upon us. I thank you, Lord God, from the depths of my heart for the way that you've blessed me, been with me, been with my family. I have so much to be thankful for. I look back over my life and I realize just as the preacher here has said, there have been many times in my youth that I really, truly didn't do the things the way you would have me do. And yet we are to remember those things and remember that long life comes because God has given it to us. So therefore, we need to rejoice in it and give you the glory the praise that is due your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything that you do, the way you've been with us, the way you've blessed this church, and the way you've blessed each one of us. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> well, if you remember last week, we looked at, at uh, life as an adventure. And we're to live by faith. We're going to live our lives by faith. Our faith is to be in the Lord Jesus Christ and he will direct our path. But to, today, we want to look at life as a gift. Life is a gift given to us by God and we're to enjoy it. A lot of people really don't enjoy life. 
Now, in order to do that, in order to really, truly enjoy life, there's three things that he lists here we must remember. We must rejoice, <clears throat> remove, and remember. First of all, verses 7 through 9, he says rejoice. What a joy it is to anticipate every new day. Accept it as a fresh gift from God. I don't know where you've ever been in a serious accident or had a serious illness or something. <clears throat> Maybe an operation. You'll, you'll truly appreciate every new day. <laughs> I, know, I, I don't know how many of you know this. I guess all of you probably. But I had my bladder removed. And um, they transferred me from Brandon Hospital over here to... Uh, Freedom Plaza. And I remember they put me in the room there and I was still kind of groggy and all. Didn't know what was happening, what had he. But I looked out the window and there was these trees close by, birds flying in and out. And I thought, my goodness, this is a glorious day. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, it's... It's when we've been through the tough times sometimes that really life takes on meaning for us. You'll, you'll remember each day. You'll awaken each morning and you'll thank God for it. You know, it's a wise thing to glorify God, to ask Him to glorify you, to enjoy life. But He says all of this is a gift from God. Did you know that your life is a gift from God? Amen. Huh? Yes, ma'am. Well, praise God. It truly is, and he wants us to know that and understand it. So here's what he said <coughs> to the youth. He calls on the youth to take advantage of the days of their youth before the darkness arrives. Well, I'm, I'm thinking most of you understand exactly what he's saying, don't you? Because for many of us, the darkness has arrived. <laughs> you know, certain things that, that take place. He's not, he's not suggesting that young people have no problems or that the older people have no joy. That's not what he's saying. Many young people do have problems, and older people truly enjoy their lives. You know, you see these people out here playing golf, doing all these things, and what have you, they enjoy it. They're older, you know, what have you. But he said, what he's simply stating here is that the youth is a time for enjoyment before the problems of old age come. How many of you enjoyed your youth? <laughs> you did, Pearl. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's really what we're supposed to do. You enjoy your youth. And everything before old age and darkness comes. That's what he's saying. But the problem is, though, <coughs> that a lot of people really, truly don't enjoy their youth. They don't enjoy life. They don't even enjoy anything. It is sad. I heard a man rise over at the hospital the other day. I'd taken a wife over there. I was kind of shocked. First of all, he's, this man was 90s, over 90. And he said, I don't get much out of life anymore. And another guy there with him said, why is that? He said, because of my parents. Everybody in the room, you know, this guy's 90 year old. Because of his parents. Here's what he said. He said, yeah, Mother Nature. And Father Time. They keep me in <laughs> They keep me in the house, he said. I can't really enjoy. <clears throat> you know, to walk in the ways of your heart is not a 
encouragement now to go, as a lot of young people think, go out and have a, you know, a youthful fling and satisfy your life with alcohol and, and uh, drugs and what have you. That is a big problem. Many young people do that and then because of what they do in their youth, they have to struggle in their older years. Smoking. When I grew up, you know, smoking was an in thing. <laughs> All them Hollywood beauties, they all smoke. Probably some of them still do, I don't know. <laughs> but they all smoke. If you lived in the country, you, you chewed uh, tobacco. I don't worry about this anymore or not. Do they? <laughs> but what he's really saying here is that, that you young people are to enjoy the special pleasures that belong to the youth. There are certain things when you get older you can't do. I know none of you have come to that place. But... <laughs> There's some things I just can't do that I did when I was young. In fact, I have a hard time even walking, you know. <laughs> By the way, the things of your youth, the joy of the youth, whatever, you'll never experience that again. It's over. It's done. I think one of the tragedies of today is that too many older people think they're young again. You know. They think they're 19 when they're 90. <laughs> well, by the way, a lot of young people too, if you know that, they try to act like they're 50 or 60 or what have you. Now, in verse, verse 10, he talks about the, the things that are to be removed. Privileges must be balanced by <clears throat> personal responsibility. He said, put away, <clears throat> put away from the flesh the, the sins of the flesh that only destroy the body and can bring eternal judgment to the soul. Well, we understand what he's saying, don't we? You know, if we're living in the will of God, we have the peace of God in our lives and in our hearts. Young or old. You know, the thing is, and what he's trying to get across, I think, to all of us is the very fact that life has been given to us by God. We can either enjoy it, thanking God for it, or we can go around, you know, complaining about everything and what have you. Now, you know, <clears throat> the phrase childhood and vanity does not mean that these stages in life are not important. They are. And, you know, by the way, the opposite also is true. The best way to have a happy adult life and contentment in old age, is to get started early in your life and avoid the things that will bring trouble later on. I don't know, I spent a lot of time in hospitals visiting with people. And uh, a lot of it just been brought on by, well, for one thing, smoking, alcohol, drugs, and I hate to admit it, but uh, as Satchel Page said, too many fried foods. <laughs> <laughs> you know, overweight, all kind of things that just simply keep us from truly enjoying our old age. So the best way to do that is get started early in life. I don't know if you've ever run into anybody. I'm sure that you have somewhere along the way, but they grew up 
as teenagers, they did everything right. They went to church. They gave their heart and their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. They began to live for him. And throughout the remainder of their life, they did just that. And they enjoyed life. They enjoyed it. On the other hand, there are those who have done all of those things, the wrong things, and they certainly did not enjoy life when they got older or at any time. Now, in verses 1 through 8, he says, Remember, <clears throat> this, more, this means more than just simply thinking about God. What he is saying here is it means to pay attention, consider with intention, and obeying whatever is being said. You know, I think it's uh, Matthew or Solomon's version of Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, here, here, we know dark and di different days are coming. We, we understand that. <clears throat> and because of that, we better lay some good spiritual foundation in life as soon as possible. Now, I, I know here it, it's kind of hard to do. But in other churches that I pastored along life's way, I tried to zero in on the youth to get them to see and to understand, you know, that they're to give the heart and their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ and live for Him. And then life will truly be what it should be. Because they've laid some good spiritual foundation. You see, in, during your youth, the sky's bright, everything is great, you know. Sun shining, all that. But there's coming a time, he says, when darkness will come. And there will be one storm after another. So that brings me to what I want to talk to you about. Verses 3 through 7. This, these verses gives the most imaginative description found in all of Scripture. It's a description of a house falling down and finally turns into dust. You know, a by the way, I don't know where you know this, and I guess you do, a <laughs> dwelling place is a biblical a dwelling place is a biblical metaphor for the human body. So actually what he's talking about here is the human body. And the taking down of a house or tents is always, in the Word of God, a picture of death. <coughs> a house is being taken down, <coughs> tent is being taken It's a picture of death. Now he begins talking about the keepers of the house. The keepers of the house are your arms and your hands. They tremble. You ever notice when you get old, <laughs> you start trembling? Well, none of you ever got there. <laughs> You're not that old. But I know sometimes mine do. They start trembling, you see. Your legs, your knees <laughs> are weakened. You walk, you, you just have all kinds of problems. Well, I guess none of you ever had it, and you're not in <laughs> <laughs> You walk bent over. You ever notice that people get older the kind of walk bent over? <laughs> grinders. You know what grinders are? You know what? <laughs> well, you 
you know what? You start to lose your teeth. <laughs> and it's true, isn't it? <laughs> windows, you know what windows are? How many of you got glasses on? <laughs> Cataracts or what? <laughs> yeah, you get worried, you know, you have to squint. Hold everybody around the world. I like that, you know, all of those things. The doors close, that's your mouth. You know what? You lose your teeth. <laughs> you lose your teeth, you can't eat much. <laughs> And Brad, I, I, I just have to look at you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. You have to close your mouth because you lose your teeth. You can't, you can't chew your food. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Go to the dentist and get you a new set. George Washington, he carved his out of wood. So he, sometimes I can't be mad. But you know, you, you, you remember that, you know what he's talking about when he says the almond tree? All you out there, that white hair. You ever see an almond tree? It's white. Yeah, see? That is if you have any hair. <laughs> And if you don't have any hair, then well, you don't have to worry about something right. Grasshoppers, and by the way, I don't know where you know this, but grasshoppers in the fall of the year, long about this time, grasshoppers begin to drag themselves along. They just don't have any zip or anything, you know. <laughs> so... Isn't that kind of way? That's true. Yes, that's true. You know, I have to drag myself along. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you lose your desire. Well, that could be for food or sexual desire. You know, but you see, you go through all of this, he's actually talking about old people, right? <laughs> For this group, I'm telling you, it, it, yeah. So you go through all of that, lose your teeth, can't see humped over, moving along kind of slow, all of that. Guess what comes next? You go to your eternal home. You go, you, you go to your eternal home and people will mourn you to death. You know. <clears throat> By the way, verse 6 there describes a golden bowl, a lamp hanging from the ceiling with a cord, silver cord, chain. The chain breaks, and what happens to the bowl? It's shattered, it's broke. And the fragile cord of life is snapped. And what happens? The light goes on. He also gives a picture of a well or a rope. You know, how many of you have ever had to draw a well of water from a well? Oh, yeah, see, and if that rope breaks, well, you don't get any water. You're in trouble. Well, you know what he's saying then is this. If the heart stops pumping blood, what's going to happen? If it stops circulating, death comes. He says death comes and the spirit leaves the body. The body decays. It turns to dust. Now here's the thing. 
Death comes. It'll come. Unless the Lord Jesus Christ returns, and we pray that he will. But death will come. The question is, What's going to happen to you? Where are you going to go? Going up. I pray that each and every one of you here is headed for those golden streets. If not, you see, you can. But here's the thing about it. We need to be honest and we need to face up to it. One day, death will come and this old body will be dust out of wherever it is. Now you can put it in a jug or a jar or whatever you want to. But that's it. You see. So what he's saying, what he's really saying in the verse of Scripture, that a young person ought to enjoy his life to the fullest, but make absolutely sure that your life has a proper foundation that you've trusted the Lord Jesus Christ and you're living for him. Then, you know what will happen? Two things, two things will happen. Number one, where we admit it or not, if you live a Christian life as a young man, young woman, you're not going to have as many troubles in your old age. It's, it's a proven fact. Now, it doesn't mean that you won't have any because some of you here have been a Christian all your life. You know that. And yet you've had trouble, uh, troubles of different kind. But the one thing that it does mean that if you have this, the proper spiritual foundation, if you know the Lord Jesus Christ and live for him, when that old body turns to dust, your spirit. Notice what he says about the spirit. Did you get that? Yes, I did. Verse 7. I shall the dust return to the earth as it was. And the spirit will turn unto God who gave it. Now here's the thing about it. The only way that's going to happen is if you have given your heart, your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, then, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have time to tell you tonight, but you know what's going to happen? Ah, the old body's going to be out there. Dust, cremated, whatever you want to do, ashes. One day, one day, the trumpet's going to sound. And this old body of mine, beat up, whatever it might be. I may be crawling around in my last years like a grasshopper. I don't know. But I want to tell you something. One day, I'm going to leave this old man. I'm going to be caught up to be with my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. And together, we're going to go to that beautiful place called heaven where there'll be no more sorrow, no more pain, no more suffering. Are you ready for that? Amen. My, my. That's just so tremendous. I tell you, sometimes I think about it. You know, sometimes when you're older, you say, oh gosh, I, did, I hurt so much and things are so bad and blah, blah, blah. You ever notice... A lot of times when people come to that place, they say, Lord, take me home. Take me home. And when God takes you home, I won't tell you, that is a, <laughs> what a journey that's going to be. What a reunion it's going to be. Larry's telling me about his uh, sister. He said, I know she's in heaven because she had given her heart and her life to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll see her one day. Well, isn't that wonderful? 
lot of people. You know, down through the years, I've held a lot of funerals. And people, many times at funerals, would say something like this. Well, Uncle Joe, he lived a rough life. He lived a rough life. I don't know what's going to happen to him. And I've said, listen, there's only one or two things. He's either going to a place called hell or he's going to a place called hell. Amen. One of the two. There's no other place. Trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Enjoy your youth, all of you who are young. Enjoy your youth because dark days will come. Things will happen. But if you know Christ as your personal Savior, you know what's going to take place. Whatever it comes. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for this time that you give. Yes, I look back over my life and I can say... I've had some ups and some downs, but for the most part, I have truly, truly enjoyed my life. It is a gift from God, and I thank you, Lord Jesus, for it. But most of all, I thank you for going to Calvary's cross and dying on that cross that I might have my sins forgiven that I might be saved and one day I'll spend an eternity with you. Praise you, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.